Hey everyone, I'm Jay. And I'm Sean. And we watched a movie. We did. We're we doing watched that a again. few. Yeah. We watched a few actually. So uh, the first I will mention, because everyone's watching it on Netflix, it's called Gunpowder Milkshake. Yeah, I don't have that flavor of milkshake. <laughs> Spoiler alert though, I believe the milkshakes consumed are all vanilla. Well, you, you made a good point that they're Whipped cream is not whipped cream. <laughs> well, we don't know what's going on there. What did you say? That maybe bacon mashed fat? Mashed potato. Oh, mashed potato. Bacon fat. I don't know. What? It's, I mean, that's usually what they use in commercials. Okay. Because mashed potatoes don't melt. All right. So you get a, a nice product that stays fluffy looking the whole time. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's because, not really yeah, about milkshakes. It's not really about <laughs> milkshakes. But I was studying them pretty hard nonetheless. Uh, because you tell me gunpowder milkshake and I got upset. Uh, I'm only a little less upset about vanilla, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. What a waste. What I a know. waste. It You're going to treat yourself to a milkshake. Do it right. Yeah. Chocolate at the minimum. Yep. That is like the, the, the least you could do for yourself is right. chocolate. Or have some crazy flavor. What's your favorite flavor of milkshake? What is my favorite flavor vanilla. of milkshake? No, it's not vanilla. No. I mean, I often do get chocolate, mm -hmm. but then I'll experiment on the menu. I think I had a bacon one once. Oh my God. That was good. You just want everything to be bacon today. Yeah. I don't know if that's true, <laughs> but you're I crazy. I think I had you're a hungry. bacon one. I okay. am hungry actually, yes. I know, peanut butter <laughs> and brownie. Oh yeah, You're a big a fan of. One. I love a salted caramel with a little pretzel. Yes. So that's Shake uh, Shack. <laughs> um, yeah, vanilla. Gunpowder, also not great. I'm assuming probably not great later either. No. Those toots are gonna hurt. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just felt like, ooh. I don't know if that, that's a lot to take on. That's a commitment for you and whoever you share a bathroom with. Uh, Karen Gillan is the woman consuming the milkshakes, or at least sitting sadly in front of it. Right, she's more um, posing. Yeah. Yes, uh, that milkshake usually has two straws and she's usually sitting at the table alone. Um, <laughs> she was abandoned by her assassin mother as a little girl uh, in the very diner uh, where the milkshakes are, <laughs> are coming from. Um, but she grows up to be a hitman herself. Of course. You follow in your mom's footsteps after What are you going to do? Into. You know? <laughs> you do what you know. So, uh, I still, like, look sadly at the milkshakes. Yep. Well, <laughs> her mom's not there to share them with her. That's true. And I mean, it's less calories if you just look at it sadly <laughs> yeah. than if you consume it. So maybe she, there's something to it. I don't know. Also, she may not like mashed potatoes. <laughs> with the mashed potatoes. Anyways, she's having uh, a couple of bad days, this woman, because she goes to a job that her, uh, you know, corporate entity has sent her to, the firm the that firm. she works with, works for. Uh, the boss there is Paul Giamatti. So you know you can't trust him. <laughs> right. I mean, he's also the, the boss of Hitman, so. Yeah, but it's Paul Giamatti, oh, so boy. you really know you this can't trust This is personal, him. I see. Well, there could be like an honorable hitman, <laughs> oh. a John Wick type. Okay, fine. That's true. And I mean, I think I think Karen Gillan is supposed to be like not a terrible person. Yeah, okay. And, and here's why. Well, okay, the first job that goes wrong, not her fault. There's just different people there than she was told. And although she executes pun intended, her job flawlessly. Uh, one of the people who dies is the son of a very important and very vengeful man. Uh, so now there's a hit out on her, basically. She's in deep trouble. She tries to curry favor by doing a second job, uh, re uh, re retrieving stolen money from some dude who stole a, a buttload a of, money of money from some bad people. A suitcase of money, that's right. So, uh, you know, she shows up, shoots him, went, goes to grab the money, and he tells her it's uh, intended as a ransom for his young daughter. So, you know what? That hits her in the feels, guys. She is a woman. she was a young daughter She once. used to be somebody's daughter, yeah. So, she brings the dude to her hitman hospital. It's the worst hitman hospital. It is. 
you know, even among hitman hospitals, <laughs> I think this one on Yelp <laughs> has been probably... Oh yeah, one yeah, star at best. Yeah, not a great place. Disguised as a dentist office. Ooh, clever, clever disguise. <laughs> yeah. No one will no ever... ever know. Yeah, unless they open the cookie jar. <laughs> of guns, of yes. guns, that's right. If some kid thinks he's in the no cavity club and reaches in for his prize, there's a, a bit of a surprise in there waiting for him. Mm, that's America at its finest. <laughs> I suppose so. That's right. They will outlaw oh, the Kinder eggs. They will outlaw the Kinder eggs <laughs> because insane. one kid didn't even die but choked and survived. But guns that kill children, slaughtering them in the street. That's fine. Anyways, drops him off at the Hitman Hospital, goes to the drop where she's supposed to trade the ransom for the kid. Shit goes down. Uh, you know, it's never going to be nice and easy. No. No, it's not. Um, and that's fine. Action, action, action. Yep. Uh, long story short, now she's got a kid and like so many people after her. So yeah. many people are after her, and she's got a kid now to take care of. But the good news is it's the same kid from my spy, so she's already got very good experience in dealing with contract killers. That's true. Chloe Coleman, it's a weird niche uh, <laughs> at such a yeah, young age it out. Yeah. Um, to be known for this, but there you go. Um, I have to say, this movie kind of came alive for me when they go to the library, which is indeed a library filled with books, but many of the books, especially ones by female authors, I, I find, have weapons hidden in them. Or gold bars. Or oh, sure. other useful things. Useful for hitmen. Related somehow. I mean, I would take a gold bar as well, yeah, but... Of course. Yeah. And not even just to bash people with. <laughs> no, but... But also that, hey, I guess. You know. When in Rome. <laughs> That's right. Or a library. Yeah. So the three librarians were the best part of the movie for me, really. Carla Gugino, Michelle Yao, and Angela Bassett. Uh, I loved them. I loved their action sequences. I loved their color palette, the costuming. Really, I could have stayed in the library with these ladies. Um, I thought the action was best in there. It was frenetic. There was a, a yeah. wide variety of weapons and methods of death. That's true. Wonderful. Um, however, the, the problem I had and the problem that stopped this from being really great was the needle drop. Oh, I feel yes. like this director, Navit Papuchato, thinks he's really great and I'm going to disagree. Uh, I have seen some directors do some interesting stuff, like really subverting what we expect from a needle drop on an action sequence. A really great song that's unexpected, that's not the, you know, the normal thing. You know, that can be done so well, and then it can be done... Not well. Not well. And when like it's not this. done well, I feel like it does degrade even the stuff, like... Uh, quality action just doesn't feel as exciting when the music doesn't match it. Yeah, it's also, I found the whole thing very derivative. Of course. The I mean, the whole is movie is. Just, it's, it will remind you of better movies. And all, I think, all the way through. Yeah. And, the, and those are the best parts. <laughs> yeah. But I think. The best parts are when there's something that the director can trace directly from something else. Yeah. But I think that's related, that mm -hmm. those two complaints. The needle drops are, again, these unique songs mm -hmm. have been picked better. Yeah. And, like, it's not that these songs have been used better, because people haven't used these songs because they found better songs They're not songs the right ones. Yeah. 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 So, Gunpowder Milkshake, eh, you know what? If you really are desperate for some action, I guess this is it. Yeah. But it's not a great film. It's really not. And it will remind you of other better movies, so probably just watch those other better movies. There you go. Uh, may I propose, <laughs> and this is not going to really directly replace Gunpowder Milkshake, but a movie we do recommend is Pig. Oh yeah! Pig. Shockingly, <laughs> this one was good. Director Michael Cernoski has found a way to bring the old Nick Cage back out of his crazy Yeah, show. like the 80s Nick Cage. <laughs> the when Nick Cage winning Oscars who could and act. Stuff who did act, who 
could reel himself in, you know, use the crazy sparingly. That's what you have to do, sparingly. Of course, he's done some culty stuff, and we've come to love this new Nick he's Cage so impersonating his yeah, own he's impersonation. Himself. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's fine. But this is kind of a return to form. Uh, I was surprised by it, and I really kind of liked it. Yeah. So he plays uh, this guy who uh, Rob is is a recluse. Rob the recluse. He has been a hermit for the last 15 years, living by himself in a shack in the woods. His only companion is a rabbit. <laughs> Named no. pig. <laughs> it's a pig. It's a pig. It's a pig. Uh, his dear friend, the pig, uh, with whom he truffle hunts. He hunts for truffles, finds the truffles, and once a week, I think, uh, some young kid from the city comes to exchange the truffle for what looks like only about $30 worth of supplies. I hope that it's there's something deal. more happening yeah. because truffles are worth thousands and thousands of dollars. But anyways, this is how the guy gets by, Rob the Recluse. Uh, <laughs> I will say, Sean, if anybody ever like offers, should I bring like a camp shower out to you? Would you like that? Take the hint. Yeah, Take it, the hint. it's not just a friendly. Uh, he doesn't know proposal. how to tell you that yeah. you stink. Yeah. It's been 15 years, Rob. Get a shower. Even the pig thinks you stink. <laughs> um, <laughs> So what happens though, Rob just going about this quiet life of his as he gets attacked one night and the pig is stolen. Pignapped. Pignapped. Um, not held for ransom. No. The pig has disappeared. And so um, Rob, I don't know if he's surprised to find that he has real feelings for the only companion of his last many years. He's got to find that pig. So for the first time, he is leaving the shack, heading for the city with his young friend Amir, played by Alex Wolf, and he's going to track down that pig. Yes, he is. Even um, if it kills him. Yeah. Which <laughs> and it mind. might. Yeah. Uh, he gets roughed up. And so, he was in bad shape to begin with. <laughs> he didn't look great to begin <laughs> with, that's right. And then he looks worse and worse. But this is uh, the interesting thing. It is a tale of loss and love of friendship, companionship, uh, of grief. It really, there's, there's a lot of mourning and sadness in this film and yep. uh, people expressing those things in different ways. Yeah, and there's a lot of quiet. <sighs> there is a lot and of Nick quiet. And Nick doesn't feel like he has he to doesn't fill that space. He doesn't bulge his eyeballs and scream yeah. and spit and no. yeah, no. Yeah, so... He reminds us that, yes, he used to be multi-dimensional. He, he used to be able to do this. Uh, Adam Arkin is in the film. There's a really, I don't know if it's a cool wine cellar, but it's a notable wine it cellar. I don't think Absolutely. I'm up for it. No. But, okay. <laughs> and I have to say, um, Nick Cage went through some stuff to, to do this movie. Now, he's done a lot of crazy action stuff in other movies. He's been lit on fire. He's jumped off cliffs. But in this one, he injured a bitey pig. <laughs> the movie, a little indie movie, could not afford a trained pig. <laughs> so they just got a pig and the pig, perhaps Nick Cage had not showered in some time. He certainly looked like it. And the pig got bitey, <laughs> a lot. Oh. Anyways, no, no worries, no swine flu to report. Good. Uh, thirdly and lastly, we're gonna talk about broken diamonds. So that one is by director Peter Sattler. It will be in theaters and on demand this Friday, July 23rd. And I liked this one too. It's a little more complicated. I don't want to say I have to justify why I like it. Um, but here's the premise. Uh, Scott, he's a young guy. He is finally following his dreams after years and years. He had a rough childhood. He's had a hard time kind of getting his bearings in his adulthood. Finally, he is going to be moving to Paris to become a writer. Um, but you know how the universe is when you think you finally got all your ducks in a row. The universe just scoops all those ducks up and throws them up in a tornado. And so uh, Ben has, oh Ben, I'm calling him Ben. His name is Scott, but he's played by Ben Platt. 
Scott already has basically lost his mother to dementia. Now he has really lost his father to death, which is one of the common ways to lose people. It is, yeah. And his sister, uh, Cindy, played by Lola Kirk, who is usually hospitalized because she suffers from schizophrenia, is about to become unhospitalized and unmedicated and Scott's problem. So, yeah, um, this movie is about mental illness. Uh, and any movie about mental illness, we are going to worry about whether it is exploitative. And I will say that even just from the premise, you can tell that in some ways, the Cindy character and her um, challenges do serve her brother's character arc, his personal growth. But I think the movie is pretty sensitive. I think it's trying to show mental illness in a fuller picture than movies often provide. So I think it's trying to be responsible. Um, but the movie is not necessarily about mental illness, uh, although it shows it as a family disease and a family problem and how it is affecting everyone and how all the members of the family have carried trauma from this. Uh, but ultimately it is this story between these siblings and you know how much do we owe our family members and how much should we sacrifice of ourselves and at what point do you say no more uh, because there's no one else to pass the buck to but can you really put your whole life on pause indefinitely um, to serve someone who is not really ever going to get better so there obviously is a melancholia, but it's also comedic. Um, both actors are very, very talented. Uh, ben Platt, of course, is one of my favorites. And I just found out that his next new movie, Dear Evan Hansen, you may have heard it, based on the hit Broadway play. Starring. Evan, ha Evan, Evan Hansen. Hansen. <laughs> Starring Ben Platt is going to open at TIFF this year at the Toronto International Film Festival. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited for the movie. I'm always excited to see Ben Platt. And he was very good in this because you can see that he loves his sister, but he also resents her because she's taken up, you know, her, his parents' attention and taken up the space that maybe he could have occupied as a kid. And now he's just going to do it again. So there's um, a real struggle there for him. And then Lola Kirk, I have to say, does really well because she makes it clear that Cindy is more than just a woman who's sick. She's a woman who um, wants to be independent. She's a woman who is grieving her father. She has a lot of issues, um, but also talents and ambitions for herself. So I do think that it's not, you know, it's not just a, a movie about my crazy sister. Yeah. yeah. So the performances were good. I thought the writing was pretty honest. So I really enjoyed Broken Diamonds. If you have the chance to check it out, I think you should. So that's it. That's it. Gunpowder Milkshake, Pig, and Broken Diamonds. Two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> it's not bad, actually. It's kind of nice. It's a score I can get behind. <laughs> Thanks for watching everyone. Bye. Bye.